Okay, we're officially being recorded. So this meeting is called to order. Um, so first item is approving the minutes from the January 20th meeting. Um, I didn't personally have any comments. I guess since Angela's not here, I also need to take minutes. Ah, that's horrible. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you could, so any, you, could, you could ask for volunteers, but since you volunteer, Jim, I, I, I'll volunteer. Fine. Um, Jim minutes. So any comments on the January 20th minutes? No, mm -hmm. I move that we accept the, um, January 20th, 2000. Uh, motions been yeah, Keisha, made to uh, accept just, them and yeah. we'll just do a show of hands all those in favor of accepting the january 20th meeting i see a unanimous approval from all three of us so they've been accepted so next item of business is what have we done since our last meeting i'll go nothing. first <laughs> mine is quick uh, so connie nothing i've had i had one single interview for affordable housing trust and there was one opening and one interviewee and everybody loved the interviewee and the interviewee, I believe, has already been appointed. It, it, uh, um, Jim, just out of curiosity, since they're already appointed, can you just say who it is? Yeah, Allegra Clark. Okay, thank you. Who apparently had been going to the meetings beforehand and already sort of was very up on how it all worked and was very interested. Great. In it. Keisha, you do anything in since the last meeting? I have not had any interviews, no. Okay, so that was the one and only. Um, okay, enough about that. Do we know anything about upcoming interviews? Paul, do you know? Yeah, so we're interviewing for um, Agricultural Commission, uh, Public Art Committee. Um, I think that's, there might be a third one in there. Uh, oh, uh, Human Rights Commission. Um, so that's that's out there for the current for current vacancies. Um, we have board of registrars where we, for reappointments, but the, the board of registrars is a different process. The way we do that is we reach out to the Democratic and Republican town committee, and, the, and they we ask for three nominees from them. Um, sometimes it's hard to figure out if there's if there is a Republican town committee in this town and <laughs> they often don't we, we try we send it to different people hoping that they are Republicans and that they can respond if they don't um, and I expect to hear from them in a few days or not hear from them we'll, we'll post that because then it defaults to our normal appointment process where we would advertise for someone but they have to be a Republican because the board of registrars is supposed to be balanced um, um, and then um, Angela and I have started going through getting ready for the reappointment process. Um, and um, so we, that will be happening pretty soon. We can start advertising what all the slots are. Um, the, in talking with the council, there was a debate over automatic reappointments of someone who was ready for a second term. And um, they were, concerned that those I would not post those because it was in someone going into their second term they felt it was important to post those and I was sort of like well I don't want to be disingenuous with people I want them to feel like you know if there's a vacancy there's a vacancy and so the sort of wording we came up with is that um there's a vacancy say on the shade tree committee. I always use the shade tree committee as my, you know, but there is a person looking for reappointment who's eligible for reappointment something put in language to sort of you know um, messages to people that there is someone there's an inside candidate in essence but the people know that there's a vacancy there mm -hmm. so um because i think we know the charter says all vacancies shall be posted my argument was that's not a vacancy if someone's going for a second term but um it, i didn't see the harm in posting it as long as that caveat was there i don't want to like mm -hmm. invite in you know if we have if we have two people going for the Energy and Climate Action Committee to, for reappointments and we post it, we're going to get twenty applicants, and it's like, well, we're really not looking to change horses in midstream at this point. I don't think, you know, I. Do you have thoughts on that, Connie? Um, well, two, two, one on that. Um, it's not clear to me that second term is automatic, and I think yeah. there's some discussion of that. It's on the paper. Um, so if it weren't, somebody might be going for reappointment, but there may be a problem uh, with their 
service or whatever, mm -hmm. in which case you would want to collect up some other interested people. So I don't know how that issue plays against, I, I hear your point. I, I hate making it seem like there's a real vacancy and people are all excited and really it's just a reappointment. So how to signal that I think is important, but um, it, it brings up for me that question about how automatic is reappointment. Somebody mm -hmm. write a letter of the paper about that recently. I mean, I just remember reading it recently, so I don't know. But my other thing, Paul, but not to interrupt this part of the conversation is um, I saw in your town manager report and maybe also in the paper that you were um, forming a new committee uh, to look for a site for um, a homeless shelter, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, is that going to be, uh, are those, uh, uh, are you advertising for those positions and will uh, RAC be involved at all in that? So it's, you know, I, I know that the charter says we're there to um, uh, help evaluate and select candidates but I don't know uh, I don't know where we where we fit in terms of when a new uh, body's being formed or mm -hmm. so, sometimes there's certain decisions around how appointments are being handled so I'm not necessarily looking to expand our role but it's a little bit weird like oh there's a new committee oh will we be involved with mm -hmm. if we have a role in commenting or whatever mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a good question. I, I so I set up committees all the time. There's yeah. probably a, a committee a week, you know. Yeah, I know. We, I noticed that. Uh, hi, hiring hiring committees, committees on on this or that, the other thing. This one's a little bit higher profile, which is why I reported it to the town council. My yeah. intent is this is an advisory committee to the town manager, and not not subject to this process. And the way we've structured okay. it. I mean, I do want to share the charge with the council so they're, it's something they care a lot about. Mm -hmm. But the way I structured it is like someone from Craig Stores, someone from, you know, filling slots. Like, like slots, yeah, represented. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is another committee that um, we haven't talked about yet, but a building committee for the DPW and the fire. And so I'm putting together a charge for that. That will be something we will seek, you know, broader participation on because it's, it might have some designated things like an architect or something right. like that, but it's going to be broader. And be more open, more of an yep. open selection. Yep. Um, so just so would you and so would you anticipate that RAC would be involved in that? One? I would ask for RAC to be involved. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you know, I, it's great that you're joining us today, Paul, so we can get kind of updated on some mm -hmm. of those some of those things, um, just to so we know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a thought, let me see if it's still in my head or if I lost it, just, um, just regarding the, the reappointment and the way you're posting it. I think that's a great solution. You know, one question to you, and it's a hypothetical, if you're in a situation where there's somebody up for reappointment who you're not sure about, would you post it differently? I, I might put a different phrase in there. It might make uh -huh. it a little less, you know, but but app, other applicants are welcome, you know, uh -huh. but if it's like, I, I mean, John Hornick is the Affordable Housing Trust. If he's he's up for reappointment, I'm not going yeah. to message to people that right. that's really uh -huh. a vacancy. Yeah. And I think, you know, me personally, and I think the view of this committee in general is that we're fine with the process that exists that exists mm, that we good. don't feel that reappointments should just be open to everybody without you know do you feel that people should be re-interviewed um personally no but i don't know if i can speak for these other two so do you guys have comments i don't think people should be re-interviewed either but i do think there should be an element of making it public if somebody does want to apply okay yeah um I mean, I, that does raise the question, and I think we have a, a spectrum of opinion on this, um, about reappointing people who have served, you know, more than the six years of the, of the mm -hmm. two terms. Um, and I know John Hornick's one of those people. And so, um, you know, that's, that's still out there. And I think, Paul, it has a lot to do with what your preferences are. Um, we, we each have our own opinions. Um, I know for the 
the personnel committee, you made a decision um, to reappoint someone who had been a longstanding member. Mm -hmm. So it kind of raises that issue a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Connie, just you didn't exactly answer the question in the, in the standard okay. example of somebody who's just being reappointed for their second no, I don't think they need an interview. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I launched okay. into my own item. <laughs> um, okay, so I don't think there's any more on upcoming interview assignments then. I imagine once we get into June or so, we're going to have a big new push for open assignments. Yeah, we're trying to do, get a bit an earlier start on that. Mm -hmm. so that in April, May is when we'll be doing those interviews so uh -huh. that the council can act on them in June. So we're not acting on them in China, uh -huh. but they, their schedule is pretty heavy throughout the next three months. Yep. Okay. Um, I think we can move on then to talk about um, the survey and our proposed memo to the town manager. I could read the memo now and then I don't <laughs> even have to send it. Um, but maybe instead of doing, I'll give it a little summary first. I did send wording. Basically, um, the survey had great results and, you know, all positive, some slightly less positive than others. And the areas that we felt could maybe be tweaked for some improvement are when people talk about was the mission of the committee explained clearly and was the time commitment of the committee explained clearly. And basically what I wrote in this memo is that a suggestion that the committee chair or the staff liaison, one of those two at the interview should write something out ahead of time. So they have a really clear, well thought out script to read of the mission and the time commitment, just so it's a little less haphazard and it's a little less hit or miss as to whether they touch on all the important points. Um, did now, so Connie and Keisha and you technically, I think also got an advanced look at this memo. Did anybody have any comments on changing anything or is it? Yeah, Connie. Yeah, I did. So- um, I never thought you'd have a comment, Connie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can't, don't give me anything in writing and <laughs> not come back. No, that's so the whole point. I thought it was it was a, it was a great draft. Thank you for doing this, Jim. Um, there's some, I didn't have a lot, but I'll just tell you, I, I saw this as a uh, a memo that becomes more of a standalone, perhaps, um, uh, going out in a packet to the town council or in some other way being being made public. So I formalized a couple things you know, uh -huh. that you can agree on. Oh well, first of all. Um, in the header part from Jim Pistrang, comma chair, comma resident advisory committee, which is actually the way you had it at the end of the letter, just making it consistent. Um, subject RAC post interview survey, I would spell out resident advisory committee. Again, thinking of this as a standalone document going to people who don't know mm -hmm. what, it, what it is. Um, and then um, just near the beginning, Oh, hi, Paul. Uh, I would say, you know, uh, dear, you know, Mr. Bachelman, or again, for a for more front formalized. Um, at our RAC meeting on January 20th, 2021, we reviewed the feedback that we received from the survey that Miss Mills, executive assistant to the town manager, sent out to, um, and this is the only place I kind of struggled and I did a rewrite, but um, to all interviewees in the fall of 2020, I wanted something that said, sent out to all applicants for town manager committee appointments involving RAC rep representatives um, since the inception of the RAC in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe even adding, and again, the sentence is too long and a mess. Uh, the RAC created under section 3.3C of the Amherst Home Rule Charter. Because for someone who's, who's encountering this in a packet or in an archive, it just doesn't have enough. Um, I just wanted to have the more formal 
content. And again, for, for us, this is fine, but we're, and then in the, the last sentence of the first paragraph where it says, Angela, I put Miss Mills. Um, uh, the survey summary, I thought was fine. It was just that I struggled with that beginning part. And then just lastly, um, where you had the recommendations, question five, um, your last sentence, a prepared script will eliminate confusion and increase clarity on the part of the interviewee. Um, per perhaps a list of items to pre be prepared to speak on should be sent to chairs and staff along with the interview invite so that there's always be prepared to talk about time commitment, schedule, whatever, just that list could just be kind of, you know, the three or four points whenever they're invited to an interview that there's a reminder that that's what they're expected. To so do. maybe add another line that says the script should include yes. and then some yes, bullet that, points. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's all I got. And what the things it would include would be the time commitment. I mean, I sort of do say that. You, you, you do. Um, mine is more about suggesting that a bulleted list goes out when they're invited. So that it's because chairs change, people forget. So I, I'm not quite sure what you're saying you would change there. Are you I'm, saying that? I'm adding, well, that they, you say, um, a prepared script will eliminate confusion, but what? Um, I mean, I say before script, that a written script describing the time commitment and meeting schedule. Right, but how are you going to let the chairs and the staff know that, like one time, um, or each time they're they're participating in an interview? I mean, by not, I mean, kind of. I'm leaving that up to the town manager to figure out. I mean, we could be more explicit there, I suppose, or we could, you know, this is to the town manager saying these are things that should yeah. be done and it's his job. Yeah. To oh yeah, of course, it's just, it just has, it's a recommendation in a memo to, to Paul. So uh -huh. yeah. he doesn't have to do, do that and you don't necessarily have to get that detailed, but I have found uh, everything from being totally unprepared to being very on top of it in, by, by staff and chairs in interviews. So, um, it's just a suggestion. Anyway, I'm, I'm happy with whatever you, you, you take and, and do with it henceforth. Um, okay, what I guess I will do is I will send out a new version of the draft. Um, I mean, this is kind of a, this is a strange conversation because we're talking about composing a draft that's going to be sent to somebody who's sitting right here with us. Whoa. Um, but well, you're right, it's a public yeah. document that we're sending out. Although this yeah. meeting is a public document too, technically. Well, so. Um, um, so Paul, so yeah. Uh, yeah, since you are, well, and this happens all the time where people send things to the manager and it's really intended to go to the town council or whoever, and he knows about it and he's part of, he's, you know, part of, the drafting in the discussion. So Paul, are you content with the memo as such and what purpose do you see it serving? Well, I th I'm not sure if I've read the memo, honestly. Um, oh, oh, no, that's okay. If I haven't. So, um, but I think the reason for the memo is important because I think the council's interested in the process and they, because they have a parallel process for their appointing appointments, um, which is much more elaborate because they do so, so many fewer appointments. But I do think it should be seen as a, fairly public document that would be shared with the council um, because I think it, people care about this as a, there's a lot, this is a major touch point for a lot of our residents is this, the interview process and the, in the um, appointment process. So, um, and also just to sort of reflect back on how uh, RAC is doing, you know, in a way it's, it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So I can, I, one question is, should this memo, also be you know cc'd to town council or should i let paul decide or share it the way he wants to share it 
Um, so that's one question. I will definitely, I can formalize the names and the wording. One problem is once I have this new version of it, um, can I send it without us reviewing it and voting on it again, which we can't do by email. We can only do at our next meeting. Uh, so we, we could approve it for you, Jim, as amended, as we discussed. Yeah. Even if it's a little different than the exact, you know, words we talked about. And just, um, I, I think it's up to Paul to send it to the town council. And I'm assuming he would, because I think it is of general interest and helpful. So I, I would just send it to him. Okay. So um, to review the changes I'm making, just things about, you know, my title chair comes before the committee, spell out committee and the subject, um, address the town managers, Mr. Bachelman and Angela and Ms. Mills. Um, and then the, the line about sent out to interviewees, be more explicit there, sent out to, you know, interviewees who were, you know, town manager appointments that worked with the resident advisory committee. I'm not sure I need to state the charter and the that's line fine. in the charter yeah. that has, people can look no, that up. That's fine. I looked up the committee this morning because I wanted to like, since the inception of the RAC, I wanted to know uh -huh. 2019. And yeah, make it clear. So, yeah, because from the it, beginning of our time for everyone got an inter got a survey um, is that interview. true? Did everyone get a survey or was it just the people who were interviewed in this past summer and fall uh, got a survey? I think, yeah, I think it was just the more recent interview. Yeah. Okay. That's what, I, that's what I thought too. And could maybe Angela could clarify with you the span of time that it represents? Because I think that is important. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'll look at her emails and if I can't get a clear picture of it, I'll ask her. Okay. But I'm pretty sure um, it was, as Keisha said, it's just yeah. sort of the more recent ones. Okay, I think you're right. And I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. In that case, all those yeah. in favor of the amendments we talked about and approving me changing it and sending it without further looking at it, say aye. Aye. Yeah, it's approved by everybody. Okay. Great. I will do that. I will copy you guys when I do send it to Paul. Thank you. So if I did something horribly wrong, we can fix it at the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jim, do you want to list, this is often done, do you want to list all of our names after your, you know, where you have Jim Pistrang, do you, do you want to list the members? Yeah. Rack members. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. I just thought of that. Great. And it's technically just the three of us. Is Angela an official staff liaison to staff, our committee? Staff, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, hang on. Great. Okay. Um, I don't think there's any public here. So there's no public comment. Um, we usually do talk about approximately when we want to have our next meeting. And we could have it in a month or we can wait and have it in two months. I see as two good choices and possibly two months just because nothing much has happened and nothing's likely to happen in the next month. So should we try and pick something for May? Sure. Very exciting that May is just two months away. <laughs> I know. Mm. Um, um, well, we can go Tuesday the 11th. That works for me. Um, Keisha, does that work for you? It should be. It should be fun. Tuesday um, 11th, same time. 11 11. Oh, great. Nice. Um, yeah, and for the foreseeable future, I guess we're still Zooming our meetings. Um, you know, it's, so they were just in the town room this morning. I just came up from there. Um, they're trying to figure out how to do zoom hybrid meetings zoom and people in present who are present because i think that's where that's our next phase because i uh -huh. know there will be members of the council or committees who don't want to come to meet a meeting right. in, a, in a small room um but we also people are going to want to get back together so they're trying to work on the technologies and you know we've been talking to lots of places throughout around the country on a listserv 
and it's there's always a it's the technical issues are the ones that are most complicated because it, it feedback and open mics and all that stuff it's it's hard enough on a zoom meeting but then when you put a public component in it i think they're they're figuring it out if you've talked to any high school teacher lately you know all about the different issues involved in this and it's, yes it's very yes. difficult it's really hard you know from a teacher's perspective to keep everybody engaged and to give the same experience to your zoom participants it's just about impossible it's really yeah. hard uh, just a quick funny story i was talking to a friend of mine who teaches kindergarten and uh she's doing a hybrid and she, she's just like at wit's end she finally um got the kids in person to settle down and do reading and then she, she went to the bathroom and came back and all the kids were giggling because she had kept her microphone on <laughs> <laughs> and everybody could hear her and oh, like God. kindergartners were just crazy about miss betty ann <laughs> she said at least you heard me wash my hands <laughs> our bodies ourselves get used yeah. to it. right yes yeah. your teachers pee too <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um well as more and more people are getting vaccinated too i mean i'll be fully fully covered by our our uh, may meeting i don't know about yeah, I Keisha, get my second been, jab yeah. next week. Yeah. Keisha, have you already been vaccinated because of the work you do with children? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd be eligible. So one thing the town is doing is we're, we do a regional site with Northampton. Yeah. Um, but because we're regional, we're allowed to take uh 25 percent for our own use basically and so we're for the next four weeks that's going to be prioritized just for teachers and, and child care givers anybody forward facing with children so ah. um and that's going to be shared out with with different people Good. so if people want to get it we're hoping to give it almost all of our teachers mike said that um almost all the high school teachers have been vaccinated mostly all through cvs cvs has been just chunking yeah. through yeah. lots of people yeah so. I actually went to the Northampton Senior Center. Um, we had been canceled because of lack of supply, but they were really good about it. They got back to us and said, can you come in the next half hour last week? So we dashed uh -huh. over. Cool. Good. That started. Yeah, it was yep. very nice over there. Um, so we don't, they, you don't have a, a target date yet, Paul, for starting to have people come in in person. Um, well, well, staff is here for the most part. We're about, yeah. okay. but, I mean, for hybrid meetings. Oh, yeah. no, no, we're just trying to figure out the technology of that. And um, yeah, so, and, and you know, there's, there's a lot of reluctance to it because people find the Zoom is, we've gotten a lot bigger participation from the public. Mm -hmm. And I think, and because with Zoom, you can record every meeting, just like we recorded this one, then it mm -hmm. is up available. Mm -hmm. And I think if we just go to strictly in-person meetings, there's a loss. And I don't know if, it's kind of interesting is how see how people settle down on this hmm. but it may be that for this group if it's available we may be having a face-to-face -face in person may 11th we don't know yeah unlikely but yeah i'm, I'm we're, we're sort of i'm, we're, okay. I'm looking yeah i just cut yeah fourth like of july fall, probably yeah. Oh, yeah okay um I'm, doesn't matter so you, this is easy yeah it is yeah Okay, any, anything else anybody have to discuss? Sounds like we're all good. In that Great. case, I move to adjourn. All those in favor can raise your hands again. It's unanimous. So we are adjourned. I'm going Great. to stop Great. recording and end the meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. everybody. Good to see yeah, you. Bye-bye.